FTN NFL team preview rolls on here with the Bengals. I bring in my guy, Jay Marson, who's fantastic and gives us insight into Cincinnati. A lot of stuff going on in Cincinnati. Going to be very interesting this year and certainly a lot of stuff for us to follow. Make sure to follow him on Twitter at by Jay Marson for Pro Football Network. Jay, I will start right away. Joe Burrow. What is the update? He just returned to practice. He was absent for a while. And we heard the comments about Chase week five. What are you hearing here with the recovery of the superstar quarterback? Yeah, the, the week five thing with Jamar Chase was a, a total hypothetical. He was he was just trying to make the point that, look, I'd rather I miss five games at the beginning of the season than, than not be there at the end. Um, nobody expects it to be that long. Um, I, I think there's optimism he will be ready for the for the opener, but that kind of that kind of hits right at the timeline for that type of injury. And the the rate of recidivism on that kind of injury is 33%. You know, one in three suffer a re-injury of a, of a um, calf strain. So that happens and the scar tissue gets torn up and you're back to square one where you're at several, several weeks again. So I, I think it was just the point of trying to to say, let's take this slow. I, I know the Bengals trainers and everybody, even Joe Burrow understands that process. There's not going to be a rush to get him back. Uh, you're right. He was at practice yesterday, but bucket hat, t-shirt shorts. He was just out there watching. Um, they've talked about the regular practices, not much to gain by him being out there. You know, it's he, he's watching the film of practice. He's in all the meetings. And so he's, he's getting done the mental stuff that he needs to get done. Yesterday was a little different. A lot of uh, a lot of people there, Chad Johnson, Anthony Munoz, Tim Kremrise, some famous past Bengals, uh, the Packers in town for the joint practice. Joe wanted to be a part of it. There was some excitement around that. It made sense. Brian Callahan, the offensive coordinator, said it was great to see him out there. Uh, really lifted the team spirits to see him out there. But I don't think nothing has changed in terms of that timeline. That's still, you know, the most optimistic um, point would be week one. And, you know, you still can't rule him out missing that first game in Cleveland. Which leads me to the backfield. And of course, Joe Mixon, I'm sure you can imagine the fantasy world here. There was uncertainty about what was going to go on with him, suspension or otherwise. Mm -hmm. Now he ends up being somebody here in, in a fantasy drafts that's really rising up the draft board because he did restructure the contract. He is back, obviously three down back. Competition behind him, is it there? Talk about the backfield. No Samaj Pirine, of course. Talk about Mixon's role heading into the season, which at least in our world, he's starting to rise here, Jay. Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to look a lot like last year where he's going to be a first and second down guy. He's not going to be on the field in two-minute drives at the end of the half, at the end of the game. Um, he is a liability in, in, in pass protection. Let's just call it what it is. The issue there, though, is is who's going to be that guy. Samaj P. Ryan was terrific, and they're they're still trying to find it. You know, the, the leader to – the, the leading candidate to take that job, Travion Williams, who's been here for a number of years and never really gotten a chance. He he has a, a an ankle sprain that has kept him out. And they initially said week to week on that, but he's already out of the boot. He looks really good on the rehab field. Maybe he comes back earlier and expected. We're sure not going to see him Friday night against the Packers. Um, so then you're talking about Chris Evans, a six round pick from a couple years ago, who has not looked good in pass protection. And then Chase Brown, the rookie fifth round pick this year, who has has done it. He was a three down back at Illinois. He's very comfortable with with sticking his nose in there and, and picking up defensive ends or blitzers, for linebackers, whatever it might be. But he's man, he's small. So it's a real question: who's going to fill that third down role? As far as Joe, I you know I I think you're going to see, like I said, the same kind of role, but I think you're going to see a, a better productive year from him. This this offensive line, they really found something last year with the the gun run just going downhill, got rid of the zone re or the the uh the zone scheme. And so I, I think Joe has a potential to have a a more productive year running the ball. But then again, Chase Brown could start taking some snaps away. Um because I, I they do he's kind of groomed to be that successor there. And then the one caveat in this whole thing is Joe Mixon goes to court next week on the aggravated menacing charge. So we we have to see how that plays out. There there could be uh a, depending on what the outcome is, there could be a suspension coming from the league. A great insight there. Now let's turn to the receiving options. Jamar Chase, de death tax is one of the best in football. We'll leave him there. T Higgins up and down last year, certainly talented, just need help from him. Tyler Boyd, Irv Smith. How do you think this is going to shake out here with an explosive Bengals offense, some changes, some new faces. And of course we want help from Higgins. Take a look at those other receivers behind Chase, who of course is one of the best in football. Yeah. I mean, if, if, 
people are looking for a sleeper. I, Irv Smith. I mean, look at what Joe Burrow has done for his tight ends in the past. He he got he got CJ Uzama paid two years ago. He got Hayden Hurst paid last year, and I I think Irv Smith might most might be the most athletic. Uh, guy as far as hands and stretching the field and running I, I think he could really have a big year now it comes with the injury risk it's just he's he's been dogged by injuries his, his entire career but he's looked terrific in camp and he's looked terrific after the two days with Joe Burrow even though you know Trevor Simeon Jake Browning have not really been lighting it up in practice but they've been going to to Irv Smith a lot and he's he's really looks the part um, I think Tyler Boyd could have a big year too if you you, you look at his the, the over under number on him it's about a hundred less than than what he had last year and I just I I think with with Tyler with T Higgins and Jamar Chase taking so much focus and then especially if Joe Burrow does miss a game or two you know those those young quarterbacks the inexperienced quarterbacks tend to lean on the tight ends and the slot guys and, and the shorter stuff so um I I do think that that that's going to be something that I think this is it. This is a contract year for Tyler Boyd, too. So that that plays into it. Um, Jamar Chase, you know what you're going to get. He's going to be fantastic. And T. Higgins um, could be a contract year for him as well. They're, that we're, we're, we're waiting to see if he gets extended before the start of the regular season. Um, I, I think I don't think you're going to you're going to see him uh, slow down, take his foot off the gas, anything like that, if he gets that contract. But if he doesn't, he's certainly going to be playing for a big payday. And it could be a big year for him as well. Jay, fantastic stuff as always. Last question, then I'll get you out of here. Defense, team as a whole, who are two players that have caught your eye here? Could be offense or defense that you think we should keep an eye on here for the Bengals, maybe offensive line, maybe secondary, because, of course, Bengals' Super Bowl aspirations, one of the best teams in football, has been able to have a, a strong defense last few years, but there were some changes. Talk about two players, either offense or defense, that you've noticed so far that you think could make an impact for Cincinnati this year as we get deeper into 2023. Yeah, I think uh, Joseph Osai, the, the defensive end, the third round pick of a couple years ago, he lost his entire rookie year to injury, really was coming on last year, had the best game of his career in the AFC Championship game before that unfortunate late hit penalty that set up the game winning field goal that sent the Chiefs to the Super Bowl. But he is... He's a menace, and, and he's he's coming off the edge. He'll be spelling Trey Hendrickson and Sam Hubbard, but they're gonna they're gonna have a third down package where they're gonna put Joseph Osai and their first round pick Miles Murphy inside as defensive tackles alongside Hendrickson and Hubbard. That's gonna be one heck of a pass rush. And then the other guy to keep an eye on, second round pick DJ Turner, has looked fantastic in practice, and now he's. He's going to have a hard time winning a starting job. You got Chidobe Awuzie, last year's second round pick, Cam Taylor Britt, who really came on after taking over as a starter midway through the season, and then Mike Hilton in the slot. But everybody knows fourth cornerbacks play in this league, and especially if there's an injury, he's going to slide right in there. He could play in the slot or outside. Um, I, I think he's, if he builds on what he's done in training camp, he's going to really turn some heads this year. Everyone knows here at FTN, when I need Bengals information, I go to the great Jay Morrison at by Jay Morrison here, Bengals beat writer for Pro Football Network. Jay, you're so generous for your time. We appreciate a few minutes. Excited to see the other games. We had Hall of Fame game. Now we're starting to roll less than a month away. Can't wait to get started here. Thanks so much for a few minutes. Yeah, anytime, Mike. Good talking to you.